Let's paint a pirate sign. We're gonna make this sign two feet by two feet. I'll make a little pattern for the background board. Two feet, doesn't have to be super exact because we're just gonna cut this out of wood. And then we wanna have a margin, even though it's two feet across, we want our design to be inside. So you actually wanna give maybe a couple inches on each side. Just using this drafting paper that's uh, 24 by, it's 24 by 36. This is where the grid might come in handy. I'm gonna make a grid on my eight inch square. This yardstick is actually an inch in width, so I'll just use that as my guide. Okay, now we'll draw some larger squares on the big paper. Now we're going to set up our grid coordinates so we can draw this to scale. I'll go A, B, C on the top, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. So now on my paper, on my big board, we'll go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. And then it, this is one, two, I can put it on the outside, one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. When I want to start, maybe I want to just start with the eyes. So I'm at the eyes in the middle of D5 and C5. So D and C5. And then I'm just going to. It's actually more more towards the top of five, this eye, this eyeball shape. So let's start roughing that stuff in, and that's how we're gonna blow this up. Just like those puzzles we used to I used to do when I was a kid. In the crossword puzzle books, there would be this pic picture gram puzzle that you would sort out. So one, two, three, four. Five, the top of five, and then we'll just start layering in all of our shapes based on this proportion, and then we go in and draw the detail later. As I start to develop the the shapes you can go back in you can just keep adjusting according to your grid and then when you're drawing your shapes you use your whole arm you know don't don't choke up on the pencil and try to noodle every little detail extend and just use your whole arm to get the broad shapes and now we'll We'll start thinking about where the banner is actually going to be, you know, the actual, the actual sign of the banner, which is somewhere, but the top of it is in the middle of row one, the top of the banner would be up here, and it's sort of an arch that goes from 
about the middle of A2 over to around the middle of H2. H2 is here. So you can actually write, write your numbers here too to keep you on track. Sometimes you get lost. I put my ABCs down here. My, my sign is an arch from A2 to H2 across the middle of the top row. So we can design our banner to be like that. And we put a little scroll design on it, which cuts into G3. And now the bottom of the arch is along row two, you know, about a quarter of the way up. So, and it doesn't have to be exactly like this, but we want to get the, the spirit of this illustration so we could have a good template for our wood our wooden sign painting. You know, we'll add in some of the details. I'm not gonna worry about the letters yet. I just wanna get get the layout in here. The bottom is in seven and eight, a little bit of an angle and and about halfway through seven and it's more of a straight line. You know, this shows that I got the chin coming down a little far. So if we can readjust that later, we'll get the eraser out. And then this side scrolls over into seven. My, the bottom of my banner is down here. Design that into a scroll as well. A little parchment, like a treasure map. And now my background is along row G and there's a kind of a circle that cuts into G, also G. So now we've got this big shape for G as well as into B and a little bit into A. And we'll readjust that, but that's kind of the the overlooking idea will add the sword details. And the sword starts in A1 and curves down to H7. You can just kind of arch it down and then fine tune where where it comes out. So 6F, 6F, and it cuts into the G box a little. So now we got this nice sword design and I'm going to overlap the, the banner over here and then we come up and now we're in in the C. This also shows me my head's a little big on this square C3. So the, the head's here and then the sword comes up more like this into the corner, more into the corner comes up here. The hilt is around this area and then the top of the sword is in the middle of the A1 square and we'll add that detail later too but let's get the rough idea in here. And the sword comes down and now it the line here and that looks good we'll get this other sword H right in the corner of H2 the very tippy top and then the end of the tip is in uh, A7 right around here and crosses in the middle So we just big arm swings to kind of get us in the ballpark. And now I start adding my detail. F, F2, G2 is the 
top of the hilt and the angles down, F2, G2. And then into G3, the, the hilt comes over. Different kind of style sword. More of a straight sword body. And it's, it's actually going into F. F and G comes off here. I'm going to get a little bigger, and then my hilt is actually get a little bigger than this. And we'll adjust it there. And now we got this big fat sword coming down. And then coming across into B7. B7. And then the tassel and the sword cutting into uh, 7C, 7C, the 7Cs. And now we have, you know, we'll, we'll dial in the teeth and stuff too later. But now everything is, everything is in place as far as the basic basic layout and form to scale uh, from my grid now if you were painting this you want to even paint this bigger you just snap lines that are like one foot square and this thing will be eight foot across and eight foot high and you just apply the same method you can i did a mural of a of a car it was like a porsche and it was 20 feet across and my drawing was on a small piece of paper and then just snapped the lines with a chalk line and made a giant painting. So let's add some detail. We'll knock it down a little and add, add some detail so I can make a, a decent pattern. Cause this is really gonna be an outline. So I wanna define my outline really well. Okay, now we're getting closer. I'm gonna be knocking down, I think I have another pencil under here. There it is. We'll knock down some of the pencil on the inside and I'll lay out my letters roughly as a guide. Just knock it down with an easy eraser. Then I'll take a Sharpie and outline this. So, and that'll be my my baseboard, be like you know, like a piece of plywood, half inch maybe. And then this that's the the baseboard where we'll paint the, the circle and the signage. And then I'll cut another piece of wood for the skeleton, and we'll glue that on top, and we'll sculpt and carve. A little relief into the skeleton to have kind of a 3d sign and that'll be a lot of fun so this is this will all be painted dark in here so we'll go ahead and indicate that so it's, it's good to have to take your time on the drawing before you start painting on the wall or on the board just so you know where you're headed You know, and I could mark it up too. This is going to be red. 
and sort of a bone color, white bone. This is parchment, you know, tan, gray for the for the swords. Just give me some guide, and that's what we're gonna do. So there we are, probably about two hours, plus the other hour or so I spent making that on the computer. And now we'll outline it and make a pattern on wood. I think I got a piece of wood big enough for this, a couple pieces. Found some scrap wood, an old signboard that we had when we were doing caricatures. I'll be able to use that for my background shape. And then this old cutting board. We'll cut out the skull and glue that onto the outline. Now we've got our, our board cut out to be the right size. We'll draw this with a Sharpie and then cut that out with scissors and then trace that outline onto the board. But now we'll be able to just use a jigsaw and rough cut the outline of this shape. exciting it's hard not to get in a hurry I just do the one thing at a time because I'm like oh man I can't wait to start painting it there's still a lot of prep because we're gonna cut out the skull and then glue it on then we gotta wait wait a day for the glue to dry I approached the sign job like, what if I was designing for a, an attraction at a theme park? How would, I, how would I do it? So I just looked it up online and found all kinds of Imagineering uh, videos. And of course, we're a big Pirates of the Caribbean fan, so we, we got inspired by using that. So I basically design off of that and then give it our own twist. So put this aside. And now we'll cut that out. Okay, back at the light table, my old animation desk. And now, you know, just got to get a piece of paper that was big enough. And I have some of the 16 field animation paper and that's the perfect size and I'm just gonna outline it with a pen be a good idea just to tack it down quickly so I don't have to hold the paper and just outline it because I'm gonna make a cutout of the wood of this guy I went ahead and traced everything. This way I can, after I get my wood cut out, I can retrace a pattern using like carbon paper onto the wood for when I want to start sculpting.
Here's our old, our old board. We're gonna have to sand it down. And we cut it out on the bandsaw. Okay, now we got this rough cut. And there we go. Now we'll start cleaning this up. Get it ready to glue on there. We'll clean this thing up with a block plane too. Because this was a cutting board, so it actually has a little bit of a... It's pretty rough here and there. From being used as a cutting board. So we want to get all that junk off there. We get it on the workbench and fine tune the edges with, with filing and some sandpaper. We'll start with this so we have some smooth edges. Just use my little four in hand. And then knock on the rough edges. So I've got this. Artist graphite paper. It's for transferring patterns. So you get the graphite side down. And you line up the edges. And I just used a ballpoint pen. I'm gonna trace all the shapes. Because we're gonna do a little bit of carving and we peek under it, it will hold it down, but, and we peek and I can see it, so that's good. I'll sketch it in pencil a little nicer later. But we'll be able to, you know, carve a few, some relief into this to give this uh, sign some depth, some 3D depth. It'll be pretty rough looking, but it gets me close to what I want. Okay, but now you can see the rough, the rough shapes of my pattern in here. And now we'll go ahead and, and sketch it and make it a little a little nicer. This is gonna transition we'll, when we paint this this will be the tassel. And this is comes up. Here's the headman. We'll paint that red. Another little We'll do a little stop cut and some relief to raise the headband slightly. And the strap will be slightly raised. We'll just do all this with the chisel. This wood's pretty soft, so it'll be won't be too difficult. We could just paint it straight up too, it would look fine. 
but I like to practice my woodworking and sculpting because I use that in my guitar building too. Like in here, we'll shape, we'll carve that all down so it's sunk in. And then the bone comes out and the headband sticks up a little bit. We'll kind of roll that down a little for the scarf shape and carve in a little a little channel for give the scarf some texture. The same with in here. And the teeth. What's left of the teeth? And the teeth would get more random with each transfer we do. I traced this like three times already. And then I'll shade in the parts that I'm gonna go down. I actually wanna leave this little bit of the eyelid higher than this. So this will be darker. So I'll carve that deeper than that. Of course we'll go in, this is gonna be carved out for a little cavity. Now we'll uh, put on an audio book and do some carving. Here, getting a little bit of rolling, rolling off and I'll sand it down some more. And I'll just keep sculpting at it. This has to come out. Let's go ahead and mark up the parts I want to, to just lower down slightly. Just have a, a bit of a relief to it. This can come out just like this part over here. Because on the eye, I gotta go pretty deep. This needs a bit of a stop cut to indicate that these pieces of, you know, the leather strap and the string are raised. So we'll do little stop cuts. This goes above that one. So we do little stop cuts to get some form in there. And then when we paint it, we'll, you'll be able to see. And the same around all these other shapes. We can even use the Dremel to carve some of this in there. Just a little th through here to, so we can raise the patch. The patch has to be higher than the rest of this stuff. So we cut out the outline, do stop cut. Do a little form here. And just leave the teeth raised. And a little rounding in here. And a little bit of shaping for the fabric on the bandana. I'll just use chisels for now. And I might use the Dremel later for cleanup. Okay, we'll sand it down just a little more and get this glued up onto the board. And then tomorrow we'll start painting it. We need to make sure I position this in the right spot. Use my transfer paper again. Line up my pattern. Our pirate goes in the middle and outline where he belongs. That way, when we, when we glue this guy on. Now we're, we know where it goes. 
Right there. Mm -hmm. Let's glue it up. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and put a few screws in it too because this is going to be an outdoor sign so we'll have it fastened in pretty well. And if the screws stick out the other side, which mm, they might a little bit, I'll just cut them off later. Like right through where the chin is down here. I'm gonna go in through my front. And we'll just paint over it. And this way I can cut them. If they stick out the back, it's easy to cut off. And it sticks out a little bit, but not bad. We'll put one where the where the bead from his little hat goes. That'll be good. Just make sure you don't lean on the wood and screw it right into yourself. That would be sad. Underneath the bandana. Okay. some sturdy wood glue and when we paint it this thing will hold up really nice in the weather we're gonna hit it with just a little bit of white enamel shake it up nicely and slop it on with just an old brush Okay, now we got a base coat and we'll put this away we might use some white later we'll get any drips and maybe smooth out some of the stuff that puddles in some of it get out some of the hairs one thing is the uh you know, we buy a box of these little brushes for quick, but sometimes the hairs fall out. So I, I kind of dab up the pools of uh, paint. I'm going to leave the little pool inside where the screw was and take out some of the hairs. Is it cat hair or is it brush hair? And this will be okay because maybe the skeleton used to have hair. 